Isosceles triangles. What's going on, kiddos? This is a video about isosceles triangles. So let's start with what an isosceles triangle is. So I'm going to make one here. I'm going to start there. And actually, on this program, I can create a side and then I can rotate that around this guy. So check this out. Oh, so I'm going to rotate. Bam, 90 degrees. Well, let's rotate it less than that. Let's rotate it, let's say, 40 degrees. And so what, what I just did was I created two congruent sides. So these now are congruent. And then I'm going to put a point right here at the end there. And I'm going to connect those two points. One, two, bam. So what I just did was I created an isosceles triangle. And so by definition, isosceles triangle has, that's right, really has at least two congruent sides. But, but if it has at least two, really we mean two congruent sides. Um, and the reason that we say at least two is because technically an equilateral triangle, which has three congruent sides, is also isosceles. So, um, but we'd call it equilateral if that were the case. So we're really talking about just two congruent sides. That's what we're really talking about, right? So here are my congruent sides, and I made them to be congruent, right? We call these the legs. So those are my congruent legs. And this is what's called our base right here, the non-congruent side. All right. And so this angle up here is called the vertex angle, and these are called base angles. All right. So that's what an isosceles triangle is. Now all triangles have um, these figures, um, or these what are called auxiliary lines. It's an extra line. And one type is called a median. And so any triangle can have what's called a median. So I'll just create any old triangle there. And what a median does is it spans from one of the three vertices to the midpoint of the opposite side. So what I first want to do is find the midpoint there. So I'm going to find where the heck that midpoint is. And so a median would hit this midpoint from the opposite vertex, right? So this line right here is called a median. And it's, it's an extra line of the triangle. It's not part of the triangle, right? It's what we call an auxiliary line. So median uh, starts at the vertex, anyone, and it hits the midpoint of the opposite side. Okay, So that's what a median is. And of course, we can have potentially, well, we really have, depending on the type of triangle, um, we could have up to three medians. They're internal inside the triangle. All right. So we could have another median that's going to start from this vertex and hit the midpoint of the opposite side, too, or from this vertex here to the midpoint of the opposite side. Right? So it creates two midpoints. That's what a median does. Um, we also have what's called a um, <coughs> altitude. Excuse me. And an altitude, so if this were the median here, a median, because it hits the midpoint. Whoop, that's a median, this guy. Um, let me get rid of that. Oh, nope. Hope, oh, hey, hope. Oh. Hoop, hoop. All right. So there's my median. I'll make it a different color. I'll make it, uh, yeah, let's make it red, right? So the red line is my median. And I'll make the word median red. Um, what an altitude does is also from the opposite vertex, it's perpendicular to the opposite side, right? So what I have to do is I have to create. Um, from the opposite vertex, a line that's perpendicular, and that looks about like it's perpendicular. Um, so I'll make that a different color. Let's make it, well, let's make it green, right? So that green line right here is what's called an altitude. Right? And an altitude, what happens is an altitude, by definition, is an, another auxiliary line. It's not part of the original triangle. And it stems from a vertex and it's perpendicular to the opposite side. All right, so that's what an altitude is by definition. It's an auxiliary line, an extra line. So we have this altitude here, which is perpendicular to the opposite side, right? So I guess I should make that little box in there. 
Uh, so that makes it an altitude by definition. We also have a median, which is not necessarily perpendicular, but it bisects. It hits the midpoint of the opposite side, right? Median, altitude. We can do this from each of the three vertices. Okay, so something that's interesting in an isosceles triangle, so here's my isosceles triangle. Um, what if I made the midpoint? Right, and I, so what am I making here? So, whoops, given that this is the midpoint of that side, what line would you call that? That's right, the mid, the median, yep. So I made that to be a median, so I should, I guess, make it red. So it's a red median. Now, what's interesting is if the triangle's isosceles, what does that also look like it is? Ooh, yeah, that's right, altitude too. So if it's an isosceles triangle, this line, this, this median, I made it to be a median, but it's also an altitude, uh, or it looks like it is. We can prove that tomorrow. And what do you think we can say about these angles if it's... That's right, yeah, they're equal, right? So what happens is for an, equal, an isosceles triangle, or equilateral, but at least an isosceles triangle, the median to the base is also an altitude, and it's also an angle bisector. So that's only if it's isosceles, right? Obviously, clearly here, the median and altitude are different lines. But if it's an isosceles triangle, if we're going to the base, the non-congruent side, um, then this particular line right here is, if it's a median, it's also an angle bisector and an altitude. We'll talk about it tomorrow. All right, last thing is what I call ITT. It's the isosceles triangle theorem. Isosceles triangle theorem. All right. And so what we want to do is we want to create an isosceles triangle. So I'm just going to copy this guy up here. Edit, copy. And I'm going to paste it down here. Start fresh. And what happens is, by definition, an isosceles triangle is, of course, we have congruent sides by definition, right? But what else do you think will be congruent if it's isosceles? Well, no, oh, oh, yeah, that's right. These base angles will also be congruent. So that's what the isosceles triangle theorem says. Um, it says that the base angles are also congruent. Remember, it's the sides that are congruent by definition. That's what an isosceles triangle is, right? But also what happens is that these base angles, and I'll put numbers there for you. Actually, you know what? Better yet, I'm going to name these guys. And I'm going to call that M. How about that? And I'm not sure why it has two Bs, but I'm going to call it C. How about that? Get crazy. Okay, so what we can do is we can prove this, right? So I'm going to write a proof for this, and you'll see how it's going to work. So I want to prove it, right? And so what I'm first going to do is I'm going to start with an isosceles triangle. Note isosceles triangle ABC. All right? So that's where we're going to start. Fair enough? Let me move this over. Now, if I create, as I did earlier, the midpoint, or the median, I'm just going to create this auxiliary line called a median. And I'm just going to note that with median AM, right? So that is where, where I can start. You don't have to, but I can. Um, and what I'm going to try to show is that these two angles, B and C, are congruent, the base angles. So the way I can do that is I can show these two triangles are congruent, right? Um, I know it's isosceles, so, hmm, what do you know about these sides? Yep, congruent. I know this is a median, so M's a midpoint, so what do I know about BM and MC? Yep, congruent. And then both sh these two triangles share this common side, right? So wouldn't these two triangles be congruent by side, side, side? Sure. So I'm not going to give you the whole proof, but I could eventually establish it by side, side, side. The triangles are congruent, right? So understand that. Where's my triangle side? Where'd it go? Triangle A, B, M is congruent to, do I have a congruent symbol? 
oh, the other triangle, right? The left and right triangles are the congruent. So ABM congruent to ACM. Now, we've been talking about this little creature called CPCTC, and oh, wait a minute. Oh, 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 a word. Since these two triangles are congruent, then wouldn't these base angles, B and C, aren't those corresponding angles of these congruent triangles? Yeah. So now what I can say is that by CPCTC, I can get angle B congruent to angle C. And that's what I'm trying to prove. Right? Those two base angles, B and C, are the same congruent. Okay? So that's a little proof for the ITT isosceles triangle theorem. Right? And what isosceles triangle theorem says is by definition, the sides are congruent. But by the isosceles triangle theorem, the angles, the base angles, are also congruent. Okay? So if we look at that in a particular problem, right, no thing about chicken wing. Check this out. What if I get that same isosceles triangle? And let's get rid of that. We don't need that now. So I'm going to hide it. Get out. And I can hide the midpoint there. Get out. So what if this, this is called the vertex angle. What if, what if that triangle is isosceles? And let's say this angle is, I don't know, 28 degrees. What if I said, find the other two angles? And what do you think? Hmm. Well, these two angles have to be the same by ITT, base angles. All three angles have to add up to be 180. So you finish it for tomorrow. We'll see you in class. Thanks for listening. Hope you took some good notes. Bye-bye.